What's going on guys? Today is going to be a little bit of a different video than my usual content on the channel, but this time we're going to be talking about how to do a low effort kill at Vorkath. So if you're having difficulty with this boss, make sure to stay tuned and let's dive in. I like to point one thing out before we fully dive into this video. This video will be for mainly people who are trying to get the 100 kills for the upgraded Nexus or chasing after the pet. This is not going to be any kind of speed killing. So you're going to be looking at about four and a half minute long kills. So again, this is for people who are basically just trying to get 100 kills over with and just want to do as low effort as possible. With that being said, we're going to hop right into the requirements. You will need the Battle of Foreign 3 quest completed in order to even be able to do this fight. It is also a requirement to have at least 90 plus combat because Vorkath is a boss and bosses do like to take a lot of damage and dish it out as well. You will also need the Ancient Curses unlocked for the low effort method. For the recommended 96 Herblor, you're going to need at least an Elder Overload Salve for the Dragonfire Resistant and the Anti-Poison, or you can just buy the Anti-Dragonfire and the Anti-Poison through the GE. Now, you're also going to be looking at about 20 mil GP per hour, which is not bad for doing about maybe 13, 14 kills in an hour since the kill rate is slow. As for the gear, we are going to be using the tier 90 Necromancy set, the Death Warden set, and we are going to be using the Vampirism Aura. We also are going to be using the Zuck Cape, which is almost a requirement for this since you need to be able to dish out multiple Death Skulls over a living death rotation. We do also have an EOF, an Essence of Finality, if you guys don't know the abbreviation, but an Amulet of Souls will do just fine. In the ring slot, we do have a Reaver's ring. We could use the new Oculus ring here if you really want to. And if you don't have a Reaver's ring and you got a drop from the Oasis. We have our Nexus to hold all of our Necromancy ruins. We have the tier 90 weapons for Necromancy. This is a guide for low effort with the lower tier stuff. So you don't have to go out having your full on tier 95. Now we also do have a scripture of Jazz book in our pocket slot. For the inventory, we do have the Elder Overload Salve for the Anti-Dragonfire and the Anti-Poison. But again, you can go to the GE and buy the Anti-Dragonfire or the Anti-Poison or make it yourself. Next, we have a full restore just in case your prayer wants to drop a little too low for whatever case may be. Because we are going to be using a Powder of Penance so you can continuously do this without having to worry about your prayer running out in the middle of a fight. The next things you see in the inventory are called Attune Importance of Restorations X. You do need 98 Divination and 93 Constitution in order to be able to make them. But what they do is once your health hits half, it does restore 2300 hit points. But you're looking about maybe only using 2 to maybe 3 per fight depending on how bad the RNG does hit you and if your Darkness Incantation dodges a bunch of the attacks. Next, we have Selfish. That is the emergency food that I like to carry with me on everything I go to. We will be using the Blood Reaver Familiar for this method, and we also have the Enhanced Excalibur along with some Vaughn Bombs. As for the Blood Reaver, we will be putting it on a 12 second auto attack. It seems like it's the perfect amount of time for your Blood Reaver to be able to survive the entire fight. As for the Reaver Bar that we will be using for this low effort kill, we will be using the Conjure Army, Death Skulls, Command Ghosts, Living Death, Soul Sap, Command Skeleton, Touch of Death, Tuska's Wrath, Reflect, Volley of Souls, and Finger of Death. And if you guys don't have Tuska's Wrath, you could substitute it with almost anything. It's just there for a filler spot so that Reflect does happen at certain times. Volley of Souls can actually build up over time. And Finger of Death doesn't take too much adrenaline and just uses your necrosis stacks as for the relic powers you're going to want to use conservation of energy just to be able to save that 10 percent adrenaline when using an ultimate ability you're going to want to also have death ward which does five percent damage reduction when your life points are below 50 percent and 10 percent damage reduction when they are below 25 percent which if you're using the attuned portent of restoration x you shouldn't be below 50 percent too often but death ward here is a very very big savior if your life points do go halfway you're also going to want to use fury of the small anything that can gain you adrenaline in the middle of a fight is a must when it comes to necromancy and fury of the small does that for you 
As for perks, I honestly did not go through perks to make this. These are the perks that I had on my Death Warden set. As you see on my Death Guard, I have Eruptor 4, Ruthless 3, which does nothing for a singular boss. On the Skull Lantern, I do have Aftershock 1, Demon Slayer. Aftershock 1 does do an extra bit of damage, but the Demon Slayer is just negated. As for the Death Warden Robe Top, as you will see, I have a Crackling 4, Relentless 3, Biting 2, and a Mobile which does do a little bit of extra damage within the boss but none of this is honestly needed and as for my death warden robe bottoms i have nothing it's not even augmented when i'm doing this method before we actually dive in on how the battle actually happens i like to point out that 96 percent of you are not subscribed to the channel so if you guys are not subbed and you guys are enjoying what you're watching or maybe if you learned something even new make sure to hit that sub button down below hit the bell icon so you guys know when i upload next it is free and it will go a long way for the channel. All right, enough of that. Let's get back into the method. So once you have everything set up and you have a preset, you just go to War's Retreat or to any bank. You hit your preset and then you go to Fort Foran 3, click on the statue and you get yourself ready. Now, before you run through the North Gate, you're going to make sure everything's activated and on. Your vampirism aura is activated. Your jazz book is on. You took a sip of your Elder Overload Salve or your Anti-Dragon Fire and Anti-Poison. Your... Blood Reaver is summoned, filled with scrolls, and turned on to 12 second auto attacks. Once you have everything on, you're going to conjure your army, you're going to life transfer, you're going to run west, and then you're going to hit invoke death, and you're going to bloat the undead giant. Now, during this part of the fight, you want to make sure that you're doing your best not to use living death. That's why we use bloat in the very beginning, but during this time, you want to use all of your basic abilities. Your basic necromancy ability, your soul sap, your touch of death, your Tutska's wrath, your command skeleton, your command ghost. You want to try your best the entire time not to use living death, also while gaining full adrenaline. Now, once you kill the undead giant, what you're going to do is you're going to hit the beam in the middle of the ritual circle. You're going to get teleported to Vorkath. Once you're in Vorkath, what you're going to do is you're going to hit your darkness incantation, your invoke death, and you're going to throw a Vaughn Bomb. After that, all you're going to do is you're going to let the Revo Bar work. Now, there are some cases during the fight that you might have to use the special ability that you see right there above my mini map which is just an arrow which shoots down a bunch of ballistas down on all of the enemies. One of the instances that you will come across is a shielder. A shielder is out on the field and it throws a shield all the way around forecast to where you can't do any kind of damage. Now typically death skulls will take care of the shielder, but if your death skulls isn't active or ready or your living death rotation kind of died out and you're waiting for an entire minute for your death skulls, that is where the ballistas come into effect. That's when you're going to hit your special ability button right above my mini map you see there, and it will one shot the shielder. That's something you're going to have to keep an eye on so you can just keep your kill times down a little lower. But again, you don't have to. You can always kind of wait for the death skulls to come around again and hope that it hits. But again, who wants to wait that long? Now, you can use the special ability button the entire fight. But there are cases where he does fly away in the third phase to where you do need it. So you can use it the entire time, which does do 10k damage, but you have to kind of time it properly. Again, this is a low effort method, so if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can just let the Revo Bar do its work and let all of the abilities do the damage. Now, once you hit into phase three, and if you are brand new to Vorkath, this might catch you by surprise. So when phase three does start, he will shoot some dragon breath over at Zamirgul and then hit you twice and fly off. Now, during this time, you are able to damage Zamorgul, so I highly suggest at least invoking death on Zamorgul and then hitting your special ability button. The special ability button will shoot down Vorkath from the sky, and if you don't hit it in time, Vorkath will come back, shooting ice shards from the entire battlefield and doing massive damage to you. Now, once Vorkath is back on the ground and attackable, you just go right back to it. You click on Vorkath, you can throw a Vaughn Bomb if you really want to, just to make it a little bit faster for this end part, and then you just let the Reaver Bar do its work. 
And then you're just going to keep an eye out for a shielder. If the shielder is out there and your ballistas are ready to be used again, just use it. This is also a time to where you can easily just keep hitting your ballistas because Volcan does not fly away after this. Now, another mechanic that you do have to watch out for are the big blobs that Vorkath does spit all over the floor. So when Vorkath does do this mechanic, and if it does land on you, you do have to move a little bit. But again, if it doesn't, you don't have to move at all. Now you'll see a shielder does pop up on the field. Now I don't have Death Skulls active, so I use Ballistas and it takes care of the shielder. And we just let the Reaver Bar keep doing its work. Now you're going to keep letting it work until about 30k for the Invoke Death to proc on Vorkath. So when the 30k procs on Vorkath, what's going to happen is Vorkath is going to fly away. And then you're going to have to turn all of your attention to the Zamorgul. And at that point, nothing changes. You just let the Reaver Bar just do its work you can throw a vom bomb and if you invoke death earlier you don't have to do it now but if you didn't you have to invoke death so when zamorgul also hits 30k that is the end of the fight at this point you can do anything you want you can throw in your own abilities at this point or you can just keep using the ballistas and letting the reaper bar work now, if you do this method exactly, you're going to be looking at about four and a half minute kills with tier 90 sets. Now, if you run around with the tier 95 sets, I'm sure you can easily do this at a four minute or even a sub four minute kill. Before I actually end this, I like to point out that you can easily do this on mobile as well. Same setup, same exact revo bar, same exact method. It's just on your mobile device. And if you guys don't know or are unaware, I am a huge runescapes 3 mobile player and now as you even see i even got a quicker kill time on mobile maybe it had to do something with the wi-fi lagging out the game in and out i'm not too sure but it's pretty pretty obvious that mobile did a lot better for me but that does come to the end of the video if you guys found anything useful within this low effort vorkath kill make sure to hit that like button and if you guys want to see any money making methods or novice pvm videos like this on the channel make sure to hit that sub button for future content but until next time guys i hope you stay safe see ya